Good day, everyone, and welcome to today's DevOps.com webinar. We're excited that you've joined us. Our topic today is managing change in a modern DevOps-powered enterprise. Today's webinar is brought to you by AppDynamics. My name is Mitch Ashley. I'm going to serve as your host and moderator. A few housekeeping items. We are recording the webinar. So the recording and the webinar and the slides will be in an email. The link to those will be in an email that all participants will receive after the webinar. So sit back, listen to our speakers, take a few notes. You'll get the slides later. We're also giving away three gift cards, three $50 Amazon cards for that matter. And so stick around to the end. It will announce who our winners, and who our winners are. Hopefully you'll be one of the lucky winners. Well, I know both of our presenters love questions, so please enter your questions at any time during the webinar into the GoToWebinar control panel, that little questions tab. We'll be glad to get to those. So let's move on to our topic, managing change in a modern DevOps powered enterprise. It's my great pleasure to introduce two fantastic speakers. First is Greg Ostrowski, who's regional CTO with AppDynamics. He'll be followed by Sasha Gillinson, who is founder and C CEO of Evolvin Software. So let's get right to it. I'm going to hand the baton over to you, Greg. Take it away. Fantastic. Thank you, Mitchell. And I'd like to thank everybody for coming out and, and uh, spending the time with us today. Hopefully you get a, a good learnings of what we got to talk about. So to kind of get things started, and the way I'd like to, to position this is we're looking at this as like the fourth paradigm shift in the way the application space is. Now, if you kind of start out, mainframes came into the picture back in the 70s and 80s, and it was really, you know, the, the, the forefront of how, how companies were operating with, with respect to computing. Then you move into this client server space where you start putting those workloads down to the, to the desktop computers and building applications that run in the client server model. And then the web came along, and we started building out websites and building out web pages. And you, you remember when, when web first came about? It was a matter of, you know, everybody had a website, but not really uh, overly too much to it. It was a lot of informational. Now it's like how we we, we run our lives. We, we go to our websites every day to do our banking, to do all sorts of different type of, of um, day and day uh, uh, life here. And last piece, and this is where we are today. It's around the, the fourth paradigm, which is around cloud and microservices. And the big benefit here is that, you know, us as developers, when we're building out product, we have to iterate at a very fast pace, and you have to roll out new features that, that are, are really uh, geared towards driving that really top-end consumer experience. And secondly, it's around scale. You know, as you start seeing how applications are coming into play and people are using them on a daily basis, and it, it becomes a, a second nature, almost like a reflex to the way they function and the way they use their application. So the real big benefit here of the, big, the next paradigm shift is around getting those applications out with faster, cooler features at a much more rapid pace, and then being able to scale as the demand increases. So when you start looking at that, and you look at your data center, and you kind of look at the last decade, you know, we used, to, we used to have a data center, the big thought of the cloud was, I'm gonna move my data center to the cloud and everybody's gonna be happy, but in reality, you started to get this more and more integrated solution that would run a very sleek and elegant application that you see on the right-hand side. So on one hand, the infrastructure was becoming more complex because you go from the data center, you start impl implementing cloud services, you start having to tap into the backend environment. So you're connecting everything together and then leveraging these really interesting languages for the development community to build these sleek, elegant applications. And the, the interesting thing here is that when these applications start to fail <clears throat> to that end user, it's really a matter of, you know, it, it's either working or it doesn't. It's either like on or off. So they don't understand that just because my application stopped working, that there's this, you know, interconnected environment that's making this all happen. So when you have that issue that pops up, you know, finding that needle in the haystack is really where it gets pretty challenging, right? So you see this infrastructure and you may have a configuration change that um, happened on the on the, one of the back end servers or you may have something that is in one of your cloud environments that's a threat in contention. Um, you know, as you start rolling out new and new cloud services, you got to keep on top of what's going on out there as well. Or lastly, you might have something back at the data center where somebody changed a network configuration policy. And what we're going to be talking a lot about today is about how you can leverage things like AppDynamics to get in and, and understand where these issues are coming from, combined with our partnership with Evolvin to understand how to how to also stay on top of the change management side of things. 
So if you look at this overall landscape here, you see how it's getting fairly complex and understanding where to pinpoint the challenges are becomes you know, more and more daunting as you start to move forward but you've got to stay on top of that user experience and ensure that you can make you can ensure that your customers are getting that really sleek, elegant, high-performing application. So when you start thinking about it, you know, the, the legacy way of how you would monitor these particular applications, you'd have different silos. You'd have, you know, your database team that's looking at the database, your networking team that has their tools. And what happens is in the center here, you'll see that somebody's tweeting or now starting to notify the help desk that the application's not working properly. And you get into this situation with a lot of finger pointing because ultimately you're running in silos, you're not really understanding the full breadth of what that application experience looks like to the end user. But you know, on the flip side, you also have the business leaders that are trying to understand why they're starting to see this impact to the bottom line. So you'll see guys on the business side trying to figure out why is why is the conversion rates dropping? Why is our revenue declining? Why is our user base starting to go down on that application? And you know when it comes when push comes to shove, when investment gets put into IT, as we've completely seen the pendulum start to swing back with the consumerization of IT now becoming more important that IT is involved. But when you see that investment from the from the business side of things going into IT. They really need to have the two married together so that you have this cohesive understanding of what's going on to the user and what's going on through the application space. So that's where AppDynamics comes into the rescue. If you start looking at you know, how AppD can help, what we do is we have the understanding of a top-down approach. So we monitor that from, a, from an end user level and understand the, the idea of the business transaction versus that siloed approach where you go in and you, you, you monitor each component of the step along the way. So what we do is we deploy lightweight agents throughout your application space. And the cool thing is when you first instrument your applications, the first thing you get is this flow map that gives you the full topology of your application. It starts to auto configure and auto, auto uh, instrument your, your flow map. So what that gets you is you'll see all your dependencies of the application, you know, what servers, what databases, what networks, what cloud services that application is leveraging. But you'll also start to understand what that topology is going to look like. You know, one of the challenges as you start building out applications in this really expanding and elastic environment, to be able to see that always accurate topology of the application is absolutely critical. And when you start thinking about what we do next, this, the, the, the second thing is we start to tag, trace, and follow every single user transaction so that we see from an end user point of view what that experience is like and what they're, they're, they're doing. And then correlating and automatically discovering that as you start to go. So as you start to add more services to your application, it automatically starts to discover that correlated to the application and provide that dynamic update to that topology map. From there, we start to baseline every single metric. So every little step along the way that, that your application traverses, we automatic baseline every metric, leveraging some of our machine learning technology so that we can understand what your normal looks like of your app. So that if any of those metrics start to deviate out of what you expect as normal, we'll start to alert and start to provide detailed information around uh, what's going on with your application so you can easily and quickly pinpoint where the problem's coming from. And the whole idea is, and I remember, and you guys could probably tell from the gray in my beard, I've been in the IT space for a little bit of time. When, you, when I first started rolling out monitoring solutions you know, 20 years ago, you had an issue where you're putting out too many alerts. You're getting people saying, hey, turn these things off. I'm just getting too many false positives. Well, by leveraging this here, uh, this here uh, uh, development that we have, where we automatically start to baseline, we already start, or start to understand what your normal application looks like, this prevents that from happening. So you're not in a situation where you're gonna overburden your, your leadership and your IT staff with, with um, too many alerts. And then also understanding when there's an anomaly going on in your application. So there could be something that happens from a business anomaly within the app. You should also be triggered on it as well because at the end of the day, it's not always about the hard failures in uh, one specific component of an app, but if somebody's having an anomaly or, or uh, strange issue that's going on with their application to be able to alert on that and provide root cause analysis is critical. The other thing too is when you start leveraging AppDynamics, we have the, the the beauty of 
three clicks to root cause. So as you start drilling down into your application, you know, you, you see your, your flow map, you can drill right down into the application. You can then start to see right down to the line of code of what's causing you the issue when it's an application-based issue. We even take that a little bit further with a, a new offering we have called uh, Deep Code Insights. Now, as a developer, you, you know, if you have an issue with your, with your application, the typical process is I'm gonna take my application, I'm gonna insert some logging to it, rerun my application or, or re, uh, reload my application so that I can understand where the problems are coming from, adding some significant cycles to your time of debugging. And the interesting thing here is we find that about 50% of the time developers are spending their time debugging code versus building out new innovation or new, techn or new uh, features into your application. So with Deep Code Insights, we give you the ability of seeing real-time uh, application code that's running in production. You set specific watch points within, within the application, then you're able to quickly pinpoint where the problem's coming from and resolving that issue without having to go back and re-implement re, uh, uh, re logging into your app and increasing you know, different um, uh, cycles of how long it's going to take you to debug. Now, I talked a little bit about how we had the war room between IT and and then the business side of uh, of, uh, of the of the the company is starting to come into play as well. We have two different war rooms that are running independently. With App Dynamics, we have a product called BizIQ, which allows you to be able to correlate how the business is performing based on the application data. So if you start thinking about it from this aspect, you know, from a from a, a business leader to be able to have a dashboard that shows them what's going on from a business point of view or business metrics that tied to revenue or or conversion rates or whatever you're gonna be monitoring for them, having that for a clear dashboard that links together the app performance is really, really interesting. So you can see here by going in and understanding when somebody logs into your application, searches the products, adds to cart, goes through checkout, you can get something that looks like this, right? So understanding the most important pieces to the business, you know, somebody logs into my, my website, understand that they're a platinum customer, see where they want to go, and then provide a dashboard that shows you a use case of how that application is performing with those business mindsets in mind. So here, and this actually, this dashboard actually gives us a few different use cases that's great to show, is when it shows you the number of people coming in, the conversion rate of your existing application, the number of sales that are coming through, but also if you look at the side-by-side -side comparison that we have here, this shows you what happens when you have an existing application and you want to do an upgrade and you want to do a comparison between one or the other. So as like I mentioned before, the business is going to be the one investing in technology to drive the business further. Having something that can showcase to them very quickly an application that comes through with the existing uh, the, or the previous rollout gave us about a 4.7 conversion rate. But after the rollout, it was a 14, about a 14 and a half percent conversion rate. So you can see there was a, a increase of conversions that happened based on the the change to the application. It either be, you know, you move from on-prem to a cloud to, to a cloud environment, version A to version B, however you want to kind of think about that. But ultimately it's really about giving somebody the ability of saying, this is the application beforehand, this is the application afterhand. But as a business person would want to see it, understanding their nomenclature, understanding the, the wording and, and the value that they would get out of it. But also as a developer, you can then start to see where people are abandoning your application. Because as you're, you know, your, your, your time cycles are very precious, you want to be able to understand what areas of the app I want to go and focus on in my next development cycle. So here you'll see abandoners at, at the um, area where they're starting to select the flight, down to all the way to the uh, the booking where they're, where they're confirmed. So you have that full cycle of, of how people are leveraging your app. Now, this is really about how you drive business value with respect to the applications. And you know, having this visibility to me is, is one of the biggest benefits of, of what AppD can offer for you. And that's where we go start thinking about the next iteration of, of how we're moving and, and how our product sets are moving forward. So we announced the central nervous system about a year ago. It's our strategic project with, with Cisco about getting into that mindset of our environments are starting to expand, the complexity is becoming overbearing, and it's becoming too hard to manage manually. 
So when you start thinking about, you have people process and systems, you have you know legacy change management environments, you have uh, different uh, CI/CD pipelines that you manage. But at the end of the day, it's about the consumer. It's about the person that's running the application, that's dry, helping to fund your business or leveraging your business or your services that you really don't want to risk losing. You know, we've had a recent report come out called the Era of the Digital Reflex. And the Era of the Digital Reflex really pointed out that people are losing confidence in your applications when they're not performing to what they ex what they expect. They start to move on to something else. They start to feel this very emotional tie to the applications because now it's a reflex. They count on it on a daily basis and when it fails for them, it's it's not serving their needs. They, they tend to move on to something else. So this is where you, you have to think about how am I going to address that market? How am I going to start to understand what's going on with my applications before my end users are starting to come and complain so I can make uh, changes as needed. And that's why we start thinking we got to go down the path of understanding an AI ops mindset. It's about being predictive over reactive. It's about getting answers versus uh, investigation. So when you think about the, the idea of a war room, it would be great to go into a war room and say, look, this is my, this is my issue. Here is my root cause analysis. This was my, 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 um, the answers to the business leaders that you need to, to, to show them that you're you're being pre, pre, uh, um, proactive to the customer, and then about being actionable over analysis, so that you're not spending too much time in analyzing what's going on. You're you're acting so that your environment is always up to snuff and running to the uh, standards that your customers are expecting. So that's why we've come up with with um, you know our, our joint strategy with with Cisco go around the concept of the central nervous system to help uh, folks get into the mindset of, of driving to a, a fully automated uh, self-healing, self, um, self-protecting environment that allows you to build upon a platform to take you into the future. So on the AppD front, we have the ability of managing your applications or getting application performance metrics that come through and correlating that to the business. We've uh, um, announced or released the ability for anomaly detection about a year ago so we can understand those anomalies that go forward. But the big picture here is that, you know, as you start to expand and you start to understand that there's more and more metrics that need to come through, more, more areas of, of focus, you know, having that tied together where you can then see full visibility into the application, to the business, all the way down to the application, to the network, to the infrastructure. Um, and that way you'll see from a... Uh, an underlying view, all these different metrics come through, but you need something to be able to provide you the insights. So our AppD uh, environment is, is what is being built out as a new platform to uh, give you that unified dashboard, give you the ability to understand causality and, and provide an automated root cause analysis, smarter alerting, and understanding those different patterns as you start to see what's going on from the application, from the infrastructure, from the network, and moving forward. We launched a, uh, a partner program called the uh, Integration Partner Program, and that's where we have Evolvin on the phone with us today. So these guys are ex extremely exceptional of, of building out a environment of change management and understanding what's going on and changing in your environment. Because you know, when you sit in these war rooms, one of the first things that the executive asks is what changed? You know, because we find that over what, uh, the, the vast majority of issues that crop up are due to change. So seeing this here with a partnership with Evolvin, I'd like to really turn it over to my good friend Sasha from Evolvin to take you through the next part of the, part of the presentation. Let me just do a little quick change here. And while you are changing, Greg, thank you very much. It's a definitely great partnership and it's a also a pleasure partnering with you. Oh, you're welcome. Been, it's been a great so great so far. All right, I think I got you turned over there. All right. Okay. Let me just switch to the. Uh, just to confirm, Greg, you will be uh, my test subject. Can you actually see the screen I'm sharing? I can see the screen. You're good to go. Perfect. So. Um, you, you were talking about the complexity of the environment. Uh, I would like to lay another uh, dimension of this complexity. Um, 
we see uh, uh, our customers, uh, majority of enterprises, focusing on uh, pushing uh, changes faster and faster using different automation technologies, transitioning to agile processes, to CI, uh, CD pipeline. And uh, interestingly, you know, uh, this is not so easy to do without uh, losing some control and uh, losing focus on the stability of the environment. So, and just, you know, to illustrate, you know, what we mean by talking about the speed, uh, you know, if you look at some of the data brought by 451, you know, in terms of, I mean, of course, you know, Google, PayPal are large, you know, are huge organizations, but the numbers are uh, mind boggling. You know, uh, you launch 4 billion new containers per week, 4 billion changes, you know, you convert PayPal, converted applications to uh, 150,000 containers. Again, uh, you know, every time, you know, uh, the container is launched, actually changes are happening. So there are millions and millions uh, changes that happen on the daily basis in uh, in average enterprise. So uh, you, you already, Greg, you already mentioned this, that uh, one of the first questions uh, that you hear in the war room is uh, who changed what, right? Um, and it really doesn't depend on the uh, how automated or how robust uh, your uh, change process is. You know, the things are um, complicated. Again, you know, if you have CI-CD pipeline, it's really a machine that uh, is uh, is running and pushing the changes without you actually having great visibility into what actually changed in the environment, right? You know, you might know what is planned, uh, you might know what is actually uh, expected, but what is really, uh, what is really happening, you know, what, what is really changing, you know, what configuration parameter change, you know, what uh, data fields are changing and so on. And, and indeed, you know, what we hear from customers, you go to any analyst, they will confirm it, that a huge amount, you know, people are, uh, you know, debating between 60% and 90% of performance and availability incidents that can be traced to some kind of, uh, some kind of change. So, you know, the change is an issue, right? You know, the change is uh, causing uh, the incidents, but at the same time, what we see is that, um, you know, IT operations, uh, DevOps, uh, and, and the versions of DevOps like SRE are, are really too focused on symptoms, right? You know, you monitor uh, performance, you monitor availability, you monitor stability, there's plenty of tools dealing with that. And AppDynamic is doing a great job, actually, finding information about uh, what's wrong, you know, and, 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 and identifying, you know, issues really in very early stages. Uh, but again, you know, there is this last leg also, we believe the last leg where you take this information and you answer this question, you know, that pops up in every war room, you know, what changed? And that's exactly what we believe is that with today's speed of the change, right? You know, with today amount of the changes and complexity of the environment, you really, the only way to be effective is if you answer two questions, right? You know, one question is what's wrong? And again, you know, that's what app dynamics, you know, Greg, you were talking about what is the impact? What is the business impact? What is the technical impact? Uh, where in, you know, uh, when and where exactly, you know, issue started, how it evolved, you know, uh, where is the location of the issue, right? You know, uh, and at the same time, you really want to know uh, what, what changed, right? You know, uh, it worked before, it doesn't work now, right? You know, something drifted. It, it works on this environment, doesn't work on that environment. You know, what is different between this environment? A very common situation, you know, it, it works in my pre-production environment, doesn't work in my production. Like, what's the difference between the two? Um, and really, you want to narrow down and understand, you know, out of this millions of changes, you know, what specific changes or difference really caused an issue. Uh, so being able to answer this uh, two questions, uh, almost simultaneously, right, you know, really can help you both to prevent issues, you know, you know, to be, uh, uh, to, you know, to switch to the proactive mode, uh, as well as uh, accelerate root cause analysis. So, you know, how do we actually do that, right? Now, how do we help to answer, you know, AppDynamics does again a great job answering what's wrong, you know, what, how do we answer, you know, what changed, you know, today, really, we are the only solution for, for end-to-end, -end, you know, change control and analytics, uh, for uh, DevOps and enterprise clouds that can provide this answer, because we have three key capabilities, you know, to deal with that. One, we have end-to-end -end, uh, uh, monitoring of actual changes. 
so we go across the entire environments from on-premise data center to cloud, from application down to infrastructure, uh, all the different types of the changes, and we are able to detect, so we are able to detect all the essential changes that happen in the environment. But we don't just you know, detect these changes, it's not enough. We also correlate the changes with enterprise cloud processes and tools, like process like CICD pipeline uh, or, or, or uh, application performance management as part of CICD pipeline. And you know, it's essential, you know, there is so much data, right? So you need to have analytics today uh, to make sense out of this data to provide this actions over analysis. And that's why we have also a machine learning based analytics that actually analyzes changes, reduces the noise and highlights the risky changes, the changes that are causing the issues or can cause the issue in the future. So really to quickly um, elaborate on each of these uh, essential capabilities of evolving, we look, as I mentioned, you know, through actual changes. I want to highlight, you know, actual. Because again, there are changes that you expect, there are, you know, deployment, pushes a package, and you kind of think, well, you know, what is this package? We don't really uh, look into the definition of the package or the change ticket, you know, in case of ITSM. We look at what really happened in the environment. We scan the environment, the actual environment, application down to infrastructure, and any types of applications, any type of infrastructure, and finding this granular changes, you know, uh, uh, to give you an example, uh, a maximum, uh, uh, the size, the maximum size of the connection pool in application server was decreased from 2,000 to 1,000 connections. That's a change for us, right? Uh, a length of the uh, character field in the database table was reduced from 20 to 15 characters. So that's a change. A, a default currency in application master data switched from euro to uh, US dollar. So that's a change for us. That's when we talk about the actual changes that we detect across the entire environment. And again, we'll look at all the different types of the changes, configuration changes, data changes, application changes, security changes, and so on. Again, to get the full picture of what happens in the environment all the time. Hey, Sasha, so, you know, one, one area to, to focus on is, or to highlight as well is, you know, in, in a lot of cases, somebody pushes out changes to a mass scale to all the servers or nodes you can also detect whether or not those changes were effective, correct? Absolutely, yes. So it's not just you know uh, um, looking at individual challenges, but we can look across the environment. And again, a very like in more of legacy environment, a very simple case. You know, uh, you're patching hundred. Uh, you know, your target is to patch hundred Windows servers, but did you actually patch all of them? And did you patch them consistently and so on? Absolutely. With a combination of this detection and analysis were able actually to see if the changes were executed correctly across the entire environment. Yeah. So one of the things that we find essential is not just to look at the changes in the isolation, but also look into all the existing uh, data, um, um, engineering and operational data available in the environment, right? And also if you map actual changes to uh, CICD pipeline, you can actually trace it back and understand, you know, uh, which commit or or even what story or epic, you know, triggered a specific actual change that you have detected. What is the context for the change? And this is very applicable, you know, for the analysis. You can understand if the change was intended or not, or, or you can actually correlate the changes to uh, uh, to the change tickets in ITSM, in a more legacy environment, and see is the change actually authorized? You know, was it a change that was approved? Did it follow the process or not? And is it actually, uh, you know, again, you can you can enrich information about the incidents and problems by adding the changes that could be causing this incidents. And, and of course, you know, the, one of the essential parts of this correlation is again connection to application performance management, where you can correlate the actual changes with the performance alerts, with the KPIs, with the events identified by uh, by application performance management platforms like AppDynamics. Now, again, there is tons of data. I mean, on, uh, we see like for average enterprises, you know, again, truly tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands of these granular changes happen on a daily basis, particularly if these enterprises are switching to agile processes. So manually reviewing these changes like really doesn't make sense, you know. If I tell you, well, on this application, you had 700 changes in the last two hours, I mean, like, what does it mean? Nothing. Right, so that's where analytics uh, come to make this data actionable. You know, first automatically reducing the noise, 
correlates or related changes in events to prioritize on them back based on the risk or their probability to cause an issue. That's a very essential part. Now, if you have 700 changes, but I say, you know, Evolving can tell you, well, you know, look at these three changes. Why should you look? Because these changes are risky, because they can cause in the near future, they can cause a performance or availability issues. And by the way, we'll not just, you know, tell you this, but look at the insights. We can explain you why you should, uh, you should look at these changes. You know, having this information, it suddenly becomes actionable. So I, I, I truly believe that combining you know, uh, two platforms, and that's like why we value so much this partnership with AppDynamics, because combining this capability to answer what's wrong you know, with the information about application transaction topology and, uh, and breakdown, getting down to the line of the code that uh, causes an issue, that actually triggers an issue, by being able to see information about the alerts and events, and combining this with the information about this granular changes and, and differences uh, that uh, Evolving is detecting, and implying you know, joint analytics to correlate the data, prioritize it based on the risk, you can actually get to the actionable insights. So Greg, you mentioned that there should be like part of the AI, AI ops is actually to produce actions, to make it actionable, you know, this results of the analysis actionable, right. actions over analysis. It's absolutely you know, what we can do together. Because you know, if you do the root cause analysis and in the end you end up, here is a change, right? That causes this particular issue that uh, App Dynamics have uh, detected. Well, you know, now you can take an action. You can remediate this uh, change and you can even automate this action and make it uh, automatic, uh, uh, you know, implement automatic rollback and so on. So definitely combination uh, is extremely powerful. It, it can also be predictive. Because before the issue even happens, you know, you can actually look into the changes that could be causing issue and make a next step, right? You can actually deal with the uh, potential issue before there are any signs of the problem brewing. So we see, you know, our joint customers, and we'll talk about the joint case study. I mean, consistently implementing two use cases, combining up dynamics and evolving. A, you know, it's a, a very straightforward, you know, accelerate troubleshooting. You know, because if you generally, you know, if you get an alert, you know, you have an incident, you get an alert, you start the usual investigation, and in, in the end, to get to the fix takes a certain amount of time, because you you really, again, App Dynamics will take you in three clicks, you know, to the line that, um, uh, that triggers an issue, and then you still, you know, A, are you familiar with the code? Um, if you are a DevOps engineer on the call that is investigating the issue, uh, or, you know, uh, you still need to the, the you know this uh, uh, last mile. I mean, is this a function that is a making problem, uh, is making issue because this function was changed? Is it because of the data has changed in the database? Like you know, there is more data, uh, the table increased, and that's why it's slower. Uh, is it because of the environment configuration? Uh, is it because of something else? So again, it's possible to find all the answer. It just takes time. And by really pointing, this is because of this changes in the data, this change in applications, this change in configuration, you can really cut it um, to uh, pretty much immediate, you know, uh, identification of root cause. And on the preventive side, it, it is the uh, beauty because again, you know, once you look at the change and you identify that this change has a probability to a high probability to cause a future issue, you can deal with the change as soon as it is detected. You know, the change is deployed, you jump on this change and you maybe remediate the change or adjust this change and so on. And that allows you actually to become, uh, say, uh, ultimately proactive uh, because you don't need to wait again for any uh, symptoms to come. You can actually deal with the, with the issue, you know, nip it in the bud. Um, so uh, again, combining the information about uh, the in-depth information about uh, application behavior, about application performance, with information about the changes that happen across the entire environment, you can both accelerate troubleshooting and prevent the and prevent the incidents uh, very early. So uh, here I really would like to talk about the uh, joint story, um, uh, our joint customer that implemented both uh, App Dynamics and Evolven, integrated both products and benefited from the integration. Um, uh, it's a large multinational uh, financial services firm, so uh, uh, financial services firms are very secretive, that's why we do it uh, an anonymous case, but the results were so um, 
interesting, I would say, is that we kind of decided to proceed with this uh, particular case study because it's also very typical for the rest of the customers uh, uh, that we observe. And uh, it's again a very kind of typical environment, hundreds of applications, uh, heterogeneous environment combining legacy, uh, cloud, uh, greenfield, brownfield uh, uh, applications as a cloud. Um, the technology teams are distributed across the globe um, and they support the follow the sun model in terms of serving the uh, uh, um, um, applications and ensuring you know, um, um, consistent uh, application operations. It's also the bimodal IT organization, meaning that you know, not just you know, the heterogeneous technology, it's also heterogeneous uh, uh, processes. Uh, where there is a mix of legacy, like classic ITIL-based processes, uh, mostly focused on the backend, and uh, agile processes, the ICD pipeline, um, automation leading to zero-touch environment. Uh, that uh, happens in, uh, in the front office and, uh, and part of the uh, of the mid office as well. Hey, hey, hey Sasha, can you um, can you add some commentary as well? You know, with with financial services, they they have they have built a very rigid change management process, right? Yet, um, mm -hmm. they still have changes that fall through the cracks. It'd be, worthwhile, it'd be worthwhile just to say, just to, you know, just to highlight the value that you provide of a company that has existing change management processes in place, but yet you, can, you still can't track it on a, on a regular basis. Yeah, it's, Greg, uh, thank you. This is like, you know, a, a great pointer. Um, uh, absolutely. I mean, like, you know, look at this, you know, when you have a, a, a formal, uh, well-documented, well, you know, uh, well-implemented, well-executed uh, change management process, you can have two situations still, right? You know, one is, uh, I mean, you still can get an authorized change, right? You know, people, uh, there is a, a, some emergency patch, uh, there are some standards change, you know, that, uh, uh, you know, people squeeze something inside the standard change that is not part of the standard change. It could be unintentional, right? You know, it's an authorized change, you know, it is approved, uh, but, uh, you know, you execute the change and you realize that you need to adjust something else in order for your change working. And so, you know, very frequently you have no time. You are not opening another change request and running again through the change approval, you know, board. So you just enhance what you are doing. Um, uh, it, it, it could be an emergency, uh, some, some emergency change, emergency fix that, again, you had no time, so you didn't really record all the information. Uh, but also, you know, let's say you have an approved change, and approved change is saying that, hey, we need to deploy, you know, whatever, you know, patch. Again, you know, I'm taking like an infrastructure example um, uh, on, on our Linux servers. And, hey, you know, this change was approved. Yeah, we need to, approve, you know, we need to apply this patch. The change was applied and uh, completed, right? You know, verified, completed. Like, but what actually happened inside this change? Which specific files this page has updated? You know, was this page properly tested? What was deployed in the production environment really matching what was deployed in pre what was tested in pre-production environment? Was it equally distributed to all 100, you know, to all target servers? Um, there are so many questions that a regular change management process cannot answer because it's really high-level planning, right? You know, you have just a ticket that says, you know, no, nobody will detail absolutely all granular changes will be done. I mean, I, I, I did see a few organizations doing this because of regulations, very inefficient, extremely yeah. inefficient. The majority I, of the organizations I, I, do that. I, I find that this kind of uh, is, is a, a, an outcome of just the complexity of how the environments are growing and that there needs to be the analytics on the back end that can showcase what has actually changed. And I, I just think it's a, a combination of we kind of outlive the the capabilities of what a change management process can actually adhere to and then yeah. putting some technology on top of it with evolving allows you to have that real-time uh, view of what's changed what's not changed and you know go from there yeah, absolutely and again i i kind of i i don't uh, you know i i'm not getting tired of repeating this uh, for one simple you know like actual change versus plan change for for one simple reason because again people are indoctrinated that whatever, you know, uh, my committed change, you know, if, if I have a CICD pipeline, that's my change, right? Or, or yeah. my approved change ticket, that's my change. I mean, there is no guarantee, right? You know, <laughs> what you get in the end is something that you got in the end, you know, being just deployed by PipeHF Ansible manually, 
if you know uh, it's just you know there are some package that goes for some motions automated or manual what is inside as a result what actually came into your environment if your host you know into your container and so on i mean again you can find it it's just very expensive to do it uh, manually like to find it manual in preferred manual so it's all about actual changes yeah perfect So, so let me kind of again uh, go through the challenge because again it's like uh, very common. You know, we see it across a majority of our customers, and not necessarily not, not just only financial uh, customers, but like anyone, right? You know, the the performance incidents. I mean, they have major impact on the top line, on the brand, on customer satisfaction. Yeah, I mean, any organization where uh, uh, digital systems are uh, business applications are critical. Um, you know, if you have uh, an issue with your system, it's not developed or it's not performing, it, it will impact your revenues, your brand, and your, your customer satisfaction. And, and uh, IT is pushed by the business to increase pace of change. So, like the directions, you know, that uh, IT has, you need to move faster, right? In a very competitive market, you need to move faster. And at the same time, you know, uh, if you look at the, all the incident management resolution, there is a very heavy operational cost associated with that right you know you have a large uh, you know support team you know as you know you have as it's transitioning again you know for the greenfield application transitioning to sre and um, but it's like it's still a lot of people and uh, a lot of uh, smes involved and um, large you know because of complexity of the environment back to complexity war room is like you know sometimes over 100 people you know involved this is a kind of core business process um, so it is expensive, you know, when incident happens. And obviously, if you have instability on the way, also, like you know, it's not just about production environment, but all the environments on the way to the production, and um, the time to market is uh, affected greatly, right? You know, if you get stuck in testing, uh, if you get stuck in the staging, if you get stuck in performance testing, you know, that's uh, it's, it's means your time to market. You know, this while you're push to increase the pace of the change, right? You know, you can't really do it because you are stuck in, you know, in, in non-production environment. So, uh, but what, what was really the solution? Um, one of the key things that we did, like, you know, the first use case that immediately we jumped on together with the customer is to correlate performance issues detected via app dynamics to changes that are causing them, again, you know, as I've already mentioned, that are detected by us. Like what you see here, here is an example of a screenshot, which is evolving user interface, you know. So uh, uh, once, you know, the issue is detected by App Dynamics, um, the way this customer works is jumps into Evolve and actually get to the information about the changes related to the, uh, uh, to the particular uh, uh, performance issue or availability issue. So you can see in this screenshot, you can see that actually we um, we pulled the transaction, we imported the transaction map and all the knowledge of transaction from App Dynamics, and we use this information, we use this uh, App Dynamics knowledge to map to correlate the, the actual changes uh, uh, to the transaction, right? So in this case, you can see here that there is a backend and backend is red. Like why is it red actually? It's red. Not just because the performance is issue, it's because we found Evolve and found a, a, a change in database that, in, in, uh, which is part of the backend, that is, has a high probability to cause this performance slowdown. And you can see again, you can drill down and you can see where the changes are, um, and, and you can see the actual changes. Like again, in this example, if you can actually uh, see the, uh, you know, the font is a bit small, but if you can see it, the stored procedure. Was updated, so we actually see that a particular you know call is slow because of the specific update in stored in stored procedure, and uh, and it happened only on one of the uh, of the databases that are involved in this particular transaction, and you can again this data you know we bring you the data the, that we believe is relevant, but you can expand uh, your analysis and you can slice and dice your data based on the automatic tagging and insight uh, uh, generated by, by our analytics. Yeah, and I can see that totally reducing the amount of time to repair. AppD finds an issue, triggers an alert, 
Evolvin picks up and says, this is what changed. So you, so you have, if there's a change that was made that was not, uh, or that's causing the issue, it immediately gives root cause analysis, which I think is fantastic to get, to get the, um, that, that automated RCA piece in, in line. Absolutely. I mean, like, that's what we see is that actually when you have this integration in place, it's like it becomes actually, you know, four click right into the process. You know, you very yeah. quickly you can, you can get to the, again, to, to the answer, right? You know, to the answers that you can take action on. And we even see the customers, uh, again, that are more advanced uh, or, or I wouldn't say more advanced, but start to migrate to uh, uh, newer technologies. Um, that they can implement, uh, you know, automated rollback processes so that, you know, uh, AppDynamics detects that there is an issue, uh, 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 talks to Evolvin, Evolvin shows a change, and Evolvin talks to uh, uh, any remediation tool or platform like Terraform or, again, Python, Chef, Ansible, and so on, others, to actually roll back the change or update, remediate the change so that uh, uh, performance can be proved. And then, again, uh, AppDynamics can confirm, like, actually, did this action help or not? So, uh, you know, be on proactive side, you know, Evolving can actually also identify the data and, and KPIs that can be then submitted to uh, AppDynamics dashboard. Again, here we see example of Evolving screenshot uh, where, you know, uh, for example, we look at the configuration, uh, configuration differences. We are comparing a working and non-working environment as part of the investigation. We say, even if there are no changes right now, we do see that, uh, again, uh, Maybe a little more legacy example. Here is a server uh, where the uh, transaction is running successfully, and here is another server where it slows down. What, what is the difference between the servers? Like why it works here, it doesn't work there. And evolving again, we'll will will drill down to this granular level, and we'll show you, you know, again, uh, uh, change in the code, or or change in the configuration, or change in the master data, or any other type of the change that could be actually uh, uh, that will explain. Uh, this uh, difference in behavior between these two environments, working in a normal working environment. We also uh, uh, identify automatically risky changes. So we can say, hey, is this change, again, nothing happened yet, there is no issue, but we identify, similarly to, you know, AppDynamics identify anomalies in the performance metrics, we identify anomalies in slightly different, in the different type of data, which is changes. Now, here's an anomalous change, that can actually cause a, an issue. Why it's anomalous? Because of its value, because of the way it was executed, uh, because of past experience, because how it benchmarks across environments. That's part of this machine learning based analytics uh, engine that we have to estimate this uh, risk score or probability of the change to cause an issue, uh, which we report to an operator so that they can take action on bad changes before they cause an issue. And, and again, another way we see that uh, organizations uh, become proactive uh, with evolving and avoiding issue by also ensuring the alignment of configuration between environments. You mentioned, you know, there could be a situation when uh, this alignment between environments causes delay in time to market. So ensuring that, hey, you know, and actually, Greg, you mentioned this, like, you know, again, you know, I, I distributed a change across the environment. Was it actually distributed successfully? Here is an example. Uh, where you know we show that a particular hotfix actually was not updated uh, on, on a bunch of servers uh, while it was updated on others. I mean, how would you know otherwise? You know, you 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 you, you again introduce so many changes across so many servers or instances or virtual machines or con or or containerized environments. So how to know if like things are um, absolutely aligned? And, and in this uh, particular case, you know, uh, I mean, we even had a situation when uh, with the customers. Uh, uh, when you know containerized environment supposed to be absolutely identical, uh, but it actually was not, you know, because the, for example, the nodes were uh, uh, had a different configuration. So uh, and and as such, as a result, you know, containers behave behaved uh, differently. So uh, this happens in 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 uh, new technologies as well as in old technologies. The consistency is relevant everywhere. Uh, all right, so again, so I see, you know, this is a kind of uh, the benefits, and, and we see benefits, you know, uh, as I mentioned, you know, so on, on, on multiple dimensions. You know, obviously, you can resolve issues faster with uh, 
savings, you know, both uh, in operational cost and in the business impact of the incident. Uh, but we were able also to decrease the number of incidents working together with our dynamics and ensure that releases, deployments are more reliable and uh, happen faster. And um, I mean, definitely, you know, what, again, the customer was happy with that, with this result, and and obviously continued, exp and, you know, continued the uh, uh, implementation of both product and even expanded it. So. Uh, uh, here is, you know, I mean, the, kind of we, we both, Greg and I, we kind of try to provide the the uh, kind of conceptual overview of of the solution and how they work together. Um, but there is a lot more information, and and you know, could be available in in various channels that you can uh, you can see in this particular slide. So uh, I think we we are done. So, uh, Mitch, are there uh, any any questions out there for us? Yeah, we do. We've got some great questions in a few minutes to cover some ground here. Uh, could you provide an example of an anomaly and causability analysis? Uh, a, an example of anomaly versus uh, I think I think it's causality. Yeah, causality. Um, Oh, causability. Yeah, they, they, yes, causality. Oh, causality. Thank you. Causality. Yeah. So, so the so the the bit, and we do both, right? So we we have uh, anomaly detection built into AppD, and that would be tied around the business transaction. So somebody may be using uh, a checkout. So the checkout, you know, when you monitor from an IT perspective, you know, you always strive for five nines, but you don't necessarily look at, you know, how long is that that taking for me to check out, right? So so you're Anomaly would be this checkout process is causing a delay in a poor user experience. The causality side of that would be, and that's really tied to the root cause analysis. That's where your your anomaly was detected. The causality is that you know uh, this database is is not responding fast enough, or you know a CPU spike or something like that. That that is the causality. So tying those two together gets you your your root cause analysis because you can find the business anomaly that goes on and then tap it into what the causality of what caused that anomaly. Yeah, okay, and I, actually, uh, Sasha. I would add here is that exactly, this is a, actually an excellent question illustrating this uh, relationships that we have, right? You know, so uh, Greg, you guys detect, you know, here is uh, anomaly, right? You know, performance anomaly. The system behaves uh, differently than we baseline it. And why is that? Like, what is the causality? You know, like for example, uh, as you mentioned, you know, database doesn't respond, you know, well. Like, why didn't it respond? Like, what is the change here? Oh, the change actually is that someone dropped the index, right? You know, so the table is not indexed anymore. It responds slowly. That's the cause, and it causes yeah. the answer that you guys detected. Yeah. Wonderful. Uh, next question: How would you suggest to run integration tests as part of the CI pipeline with dependencies to lower environments? Oh, wow. that's a difficult question. That's a, that's a, yeah, that's a, that's is that a, that's like a the universe and everything? <laughs> so, that, so that's a great question. That's a great question. Um, the, the, so the first thing would be you're running, this would be a, a either running like a canary release or pre prod and, and production type environments. So from that point of view, you know, you'd have your, your applications instrumented both on the, pre-production as well as the production so you can be able to compare one against the other but that you know that's, that goes by the age-old question of you know no matter how much you prep and how much you run in, in your lab it never simulates what production really looks like so it's more along the lines of your ci cd process where you're continuously iterating on production code getting out uh you know a devops cycle where you're launching five six seven releases per day in that type of environment that's a that's a different a little bit different use case but it's still in line where you're continuously monitoring you're comparing previous versus um uh new release and then you know in the in the case that your new release has a has an issue you can fall back but you know you got a couple different scenarios on that on that question but fantastic question i appreciate that one yeah okay and, and I, would, uh, Misha, I would add here like you know our additional angle here is the actually Lower environment is never, you know, the same as, I mean, or, or again, depends really, again, what technology you're using. But in many cases, not the same as your production and um, not the same complexity. But, uh, you know, one of the things is that you can actually verify alignment, like ensure that they have reasonable alignment, reasonable representation, you know, that certain configuration, like 
again, I will take an example of more of legacy system. You know, you will not have like a huge database like in production. If you run Oracle, for example, it's the same in your uh, integration test environment. But at the same time, you can ensure that the key configurations, right, and those the, the key configurations, for example, are aligned, right? The indexes are the same indexes, right? And all the tables have the same structure and so on. So that way you actually ensure that at least you know the integration test you're running is the best you can do, considering this uh, differences, you know, expected differences between the lower and higher environment. Very good. Let's uh, fit in one more question here. It's coming f probably from an existing customer, App Dynamics customer. They would like to know what it takes to implement and configure Evolve into an existing environment. Is that a big process? To set that up, what does it take? Right. Uh, actually, it's not, right? You know, the, technically, uh, the technical implementation itself, it's a matter, you know, if you have the on-premise option, uh, to set up a server, it takes you know half an hour. You know to drop uh, and set up collectors, it takes you know a few minutes. It's more uh, it depends on the customer's process, like you know, um, to ensure that all the security requirements are in place, that all the approvals are in place. Again, you know, if we talk about the enterprise, like you know the customer I was mentioning and uh, we're mentioning as a case study, you know there are process around that will again that may take time. The technical part is negligible. Okay, good. Well, I have one bonus question. It's worth double the points. <laughs> Is there a way to reduce dashboards? Can you integrate your dashboards into other dashboard products? For us, it's 100% like I will give you an example. The KPIs that we are generating, the things that I was showing in the screenshots, you know, we can push the data into the uh, Dynamics dashboard, for example. But uh, if a customer has, like, you know, a a manager of managers and pools, for example, both uh, dynamics data and evolving data, we can also, we have open API, we have integration with the dashboards and uh, absolutely the data can go to uh, a, a single dashboard that is picked by the customer as a manager of managers. Okay, great. Well, yeah, we're we're, gonna, I mean, oh, on ahead. the app side, we're actually pretty, we're very flexible as well. You know, mm -hmm. we'll, have, we'll have folks that have, you know, thousands of applications that they're monitoring and they just really want to have a red, green, yellow, button for each application that they build on their own. We just integrate through an API. So it's pretty, pretty, pretty straightforward. And then, um, you know, we, we, people are very flexible on how they, they build that dashboards. Okay, excellent. Well, thanks to uh, Subo, Steve, uh, Peter. I guess we missed one question from Julie. We'll reach out to Julie directly, directly for those uh, questions. Thank you very much participants for that. Well, let's move on to uh, just briefly before we hit the top of the hour. Uh, make sure we have time to give away our gift cards. We have three $50 Amazon gift cards, and our winners are Devin A, Julian M, and Nikki K. So the Media Ops folks will reach out to you and let you know how you can get your gift cards. It's a reminder that our webinar is recorded, was recorded, and that and the slides will be available via an email that all participants will receive. And you can also go to devops.com and uh, see the recording again from there. You can check it out there. So please join me in thanking both of our fantastic speakers. Guys, you were awesome. You did an excellent job. Really enjoyed it. Thank you. <laughs> um, both Greg uh, Astro, Ostrowski, thank you, got it there, and regional CTO with App Dynamics, and also Sasha Gillinson, founder and CEO with Evolve and Software. You know, we, our audience has spent almost an hour with us, and we know your time is extremely valuable, and we're very honored that you would spend it with us. Thank you for spending that hour with us. It's been my pleasure hosting today's webinar, and uh, have a great day. Everybody be careful out there. Thanks, Greg and Sasha. Take care. Thank you.